ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Mr. Do, and science is my business. Well, welcome to Mr. Do Science World, and today we are going to talk about work. Work is something that is very simple, and everybody knows what work is. But work is not just the ordinary meaning of the word work. We want to look at work from the perspective of a physicist. Now let's look at what we mean by work in terms of physics. So what is work? Work is done on an object when a force applied in an object and then the object moves such that the object is in the direction of the force. Then we say work is done. This simply implies that Whenever you apply a force to an object and the object moves in the direction where the force is being applied, what we have is a work done. Now let's look at this situation. Look at the object that we are having here. And with this object, a force is now applied to the object. So we can see the object is now moving in the direction of the force because the force is pointing in the eastward direction and the object has also moved in what in an eastward direction therefore we say work is done so work is defined mathematically as force times displacement in simple when you say work it simply means W is equals to capital F multiplied by change in X. The sign, the triangular sign that is there is what referred to as delta. So that is delta X, which refers to change in displacement. If you look at the formula from here, we said it is force times displacement. When you look at the force times change in displacement, force is measured in newtons. And displacement is measured in meters. Therefore, we can say the unit of work is Newton meters. And Newton meters is simply what? Joules. Which we can just simply say that work has a unit which is measured in what? Joules. So, work is a scalar quantity. That means there is no direction. We can only talk about the magnitude of work, but we can talk about the direction in which the work, the work is being done. So we speak of magnitude, which means work is what? It's a scalar quantity. Let's look at some instances during which work is done. Because it is not all situations that we can say work is being done. For example, if a man try to push a wall and the wall is not moving but the man is sweating the man pushes the wall from morning to evening but the wall has not changed its direction because the wall has not changed direction we say there is no work that is done so let's look at the instances where work is being done number one a force must on the object on which work is done all the time before we say that work is done two there must be resistance of some kind to the object's motion otherwise the force would not be necessary and the third situation is going to be the object must move in the direction of the force. That is what? That is applied. So if the force is applied and the object is not moving in the direction, then we can talk about something different in terms of phases. So let's try and look at some scenarios and see because we can talk about a positive work done. We can talk about a negative work done. And we can talk about a zero work done. So let's look at scenario number one. If we see 
that the force is applied on an object. And now the object and the force, they are all in the same direction. We say that the work done there is what? It's zero degrees. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that in this case, the displacement and the force, they are parallel to each other. The angle that exists between them is zero because the displacement and the force are parallel. And because they are parallel, the angle theta is zero. And if it is zero, therefore, the work done there is going to be what? A positive work done. So we have positive work done in such situation. Scenario number two, where we see that the displacement and the applied force, they are in opposite direction. They are in opposite direction, meaning that the angle that is formed between the displacement and the force is 180 degrees because they are in opposite direction. The force is going east direction and the displacement is moving in the west direction. They will form an angle which is on a straight line. And that will make us to have what? A 180 degrees. And this situation, the work done is going to be a negative work done. Negative work done because cos theta. When we take the cos of 180 degrees, it's going to give us negative 1. And if you multiply it by any of those quantities there, then we are going to have what? A negative work done. You will understand shortly. Let's look at scenario number three. We can have what we refer to as a zero work done. Like in the case where our displacement and the force, they are perpendicular to each other. If the force and the displacement are perpendicular to each other, like for example, you walk into a restaurant and you see the waitress coming to serve you with water on a tray and he places the arm like this. The force that is being applied is in the upward direction, which is vertical, and the displacement, you can see that the tray is moving horizontally. So the angle that is created there is going to be 90 degrees. And if you take cos of 90, we are going to get zero. And if you multiply zero by any of those quantities, the force and the displacement, our work done is going to be a zero work done. Okay. Let's look at work and Newton's second law. Under frictionless condition, no work is done when the object is moving at a uniform velocity. Why? Because there is no resultant force that is what? That is applied. So if there is no resultant force that is applied, at the end of the day, we expect that there will be no work done. Whenever a resultant force is applied, and causes a displacement in the direction of the force, then work is what is done. So, we can say work is also equal to a frictional force multiplied by the delta x. So I can say W is equal to FREX, where I am talking about what? We are looking at a situation where we have what? A frictionless condition. And this can simply be because we know that our force, according to Newton's second law, is what? It's ma. And if f is ma, we can replace the force with what? The ma. And then our work can also become what? w is equals to ma delta x, where the ma is representing the what? The net force. And then delta x is now what? Our displacement. If the motion occurs, why a force is applied at a right angle to this motion? As I explained earlier, earlier in our scenario number three, then no work is done. Okay, 
work done by a force that is now acting at an angle. We want to look at such situation. We are having work where an object is placed somewhere, a force is applied to this particular object, but the force is applied at a certain angle. Remember, immediately we have such situation that we are talking about two-dimensional. And if you are looking at two-dimensional, then we can talk about what? The components of the force that is applied on that particular object. When a force F moves an object at an angle, the force has to be resolved into eight components. That is, we have to look at the vertical component, which is the Fy, and we have to look at the horizontal component, Fx. And if you resolve it by this way, according to what we did in dynamics, our Fx is going to be f cos theta and our f y is going to be f sin theta the horizontal component of the force is moving the object in a horizontal direction and therefore the work done by this force in that horizontal direction is going to be work is equals to force times the displacement and remember that, in this case, the force is F cos theta. Therefore, the work done is going to be F cos theta times delta X. And if we look at the other aspect, if it happens that the force is now moving the object in a vertical direction, then we are also going to have the work done to become F sine theta multiply by delta x immediately you see that that we know we are talking about the work done in the vertical direction let's try and look at some questions here question number one if a stone is lifted off the ground at a steady speed to a given height the amount of work done against gravity to lift the stone does not depend on A. The speed with which is lifted B. The height to which it is lifted C. Its mass D. It weights. Now, looking at these options, which one do you think is the correct option? Pause the video and give your answer. Looking at the question that we were given, the option that best suits the correct or the correct answer to this particular problem is going to be option A, which is the speed with which is lifted so the speed with which it is lifted is the correct option to this particular problem let's look at number two question number two and which one of the following is there no work done on the object remember if you are talking about a situation where there is no work done there is either you're going to have the angle between your displacement and your uh your force to be 90 degrees or there is no distance or there's no force that is applied so let's look at it option a an apple falls to the ground option b a brick is lifted from the ground to the top option c a car slows down to stop d a box moves at a constant velocity across a frictionless horizontal surface right which is the correct option today you can pause the video 
and respond to the question. Well, if you look at this particular problem, the, cor the correct option to this particular question is option D because it is what? It is a frictionless surface and it is moving at what? A constant velocity. Therefore, the, that makes it the correct word option to that particular problem. Right. Let's move away and look at some pure calculation questions. So let's look at question number three. A 23 kg block is pulled across a 4.5 meters long floor with a force of 55 newtons at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of friction between the surfaces is 0 0.20. Find question number one to that problem number three. Work done by pulling force. Two, work done by friction. And three, total work done. Alright, so this is the diagram for the problem and we are told first to find the work done by the pulling force. This is the force that is applied, it is 55 newtons and the force is being pulled in this direction. If it is being pulled in this direction, we can see that the direction of motion is just going to be in a horizontal form. So if it is a horizontal form, it means that we only just need to look for the what? The horizontal component of this what? Of the applied force or the pulling force. Because that is the one doing the work. Okay. So if that is the one doing the work, I need to look for that. So I can simply just draw this to that and make it a right angle triangle. So I want the pulling force. Pulling force is here, so pardon me to just use it as a, say, FT, or let me call it uh, FP, FPX, and this is my FPY, okay? The pulling force in the Y direction and the pulling force in the X direction. But the one that is doing the work in this situation is the one, is the one in the X direction. So that is the one that I am interested in looking for. And remember, we are applying the knowledge of our Sokatwa. This is the opposite. So this is what our adjacent. Therefore, we're going to talk about what they are going to talk about the cause. So we can say that FPX it simply equals to the force times cos what of the angle. And remember, cos of the angle, we know the force is 55 and the angle is 35 degrees. So quickly I can just do that and say that okay uh, this is going to give me uh, this value okay before i do the substitution let's move on and look for the work itself so i want to look for the work done work done according to our definition work done by this pulling force is just simply going to be the work done by the pulling force in the x direction okay multiply by what a change in the world in the displacement okay now change in my displacement but what is this force well this remember this is already at a certain angle okay and we know that because it is at an angle we can talk about what we can talk about cos cos what cos theta okay this is the important thing that I want you to take note of here. Because we know that this is having a cos theta there, and here there is a cos theta. That this cos theta is not from here, but rather it is the one from the formula originally to say that if a force is applied at a certain angle, then we will have the force multiplied by change in x multiplied by what? Cos theta. So this formula is where we are getting that cause from and that is this cause that we have over here 
Now let's move on and see in this situation what is this, what is our FPX? Our FPX is F cos theta. So this is going to be F cos theta multiplied by the displacement multiplied by cos theta. What is this cos theta? This cos theta, the theta here is the angle that is formed between the what? The applied force or the pulling force and the what? And the displacement. Right. Now let's check and see. I'm going to do substitution shortly. So we will check from here and see. Where is the pulling force? The pulling force is in the horizontal direction. So this is my direction of motion. Where is the applied force? The applied force is also here. Where is it going? It is also going in that same direction. So we can see my force is here. My direction of motion is here. What is the angle between the force and the what? And the displacement. Which is the direction of motion? We can see that this is parallel lines. Therefore, theta is what? Theta is zero. The angle between parallel lines is zero. So this is going to be zero. So I could also ignore this as well. All right. So here we know this is zero, but we know this is what is 35. This is 35 degrees, but this is what is zero. So let's try and now do the substitution and find the solution itself. Alright, now let's do the substitution and see what we are going to have as our answer. So, I try to create some space so that we can do the substitution straightforward. Now we can see from here that the work done by the pulling force is now being equal to the force. What is the force? It is 55 multiplied by cos cos what? cos theta and we said this theta is what? is 35 so I put there 35 oh sorry 35 is here now multiply by the displacement what is the displacement? the displacement is 4.5 so that is 4.5 multiply by cos and now we have the cos there Cos what? Theta. What is this theta? That is the angle between the what? The displacement and the force. And that is what? Zero. Now, let's put this straight away into our calculator and see what we're going to have as the answer to that. Okay. So, what I have is 55 multiplied by cos of uh, 35. Okay. And then we multiply that by 4.5 and multiply it by cos what? Cos 0. Right. Straightforward, what do we have? We are having 0. Point, sorry, 0. 202.74. This is work, so we said it is in what? It is in joules. So this becomes the what? The answer to that question number one. So this is the force, the pulling force, okay? The force that is pulling the object in the horizontal direction here. So that is our pulling force. Let's now look at the question number two, where we are told to find the what? The frictional, the work done by the frictional force. Okay, now. When I look at the diagram, now here, I am going to draw a free body diagram to look at the forces that are acting on this object, and then we will use that to find what we are to look for now. So one important thing is, each time that you are dealing with a calculations like this, it is important you draw a free body diagram. All right, so let's see. This is my object. And we can see it is on a plane, so therefore there is a weight here. There is also a normal. There is a frictional force. And there is what? There is a pulling force. 
Remember that pulling force was at was at a certain angle. So let me put it that way. Make it the way it was. Is that it? This is our pulling force. And we know that that was at a certain angle, which is 35 here. So this is my so this is my free body diagram. Now let's look at it and see. We have found the work done by this pulling force. The next thing to do is to find the work done by this friction. Okay. So if I want to look for the work done by the friction, what do I do? All I need to do is to state the formula. And the formula is simply W Okay, FF, I am going to use that so the work done by the friction. And that is going to be the force of friction multiplied by the change in displacement multiplied by the cost of the angle between the displacement and what? And the force. Okay. Good. So now, I need to find the frictional force. We were given the coefficient of friction. So once the coefficient of kinetic friction is given in this situation, I can easily find my what? My frictional force. There are so many ways you can find the friction. So we can find the net force here, and from there we'll be able to find the friction. Or we know that this is on a plane, therefore, the normal force here is equal to, in this situation, remember, the normal force is not equal to the weight because there is a vertical component here. So, the normal force plus the vertical component of the pulling force must be equal to the what? Must be equal to the weight. And if that is equal to the weight, this will help us to be able to find the what? Our normal force. Why do I need normal force? I need a normal force because frictional force is simply the what? The mu multiplied by what? By the normal. And therefore, we need to find the what? The normal force. So once I know the normal force, I will be able to do what? To do the substitution and so for the frictional force. Okay, so let's see from there. I know that Fn plus Fpy, okay, plus this, okay, all must be equal to zero because the net force in the vertical direction is zero. The reason is because the what? The object is not moving in a vertical direction. It is moving horizontally. So therefore, we can say the net force in that vertical direction is equal to zero. And once I do this, I can find my normal. So let's see. What is this? This is known because we know this is going to be what? The force applied multiplied by the sine of this angle. And we know that Fg is simply what? The mass times the what? The gravity, the strength of gravity, which is 9.8. And that will help us to find the value that we are looking for. So let's see. My Fn plus the pulling force is now 55 multiplied by sine 35. And that is added to the mass, which is... 2, 3, okay, 2, 3 multiplied by the strength of gravity, in this case, is going to be a negative sign, so 9.8, because that value is that, and this is going to give me equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to clean here, and now we will finish the problem. Once I do that, what is my Fn? Fn is simply, take your calculator, and let's do that quickly. We're going to have 55 
multiply by sine 35 and that is going to give us okay that's going to give us 31.5 uh, Six, seven. Okay, I try to keep this. I'm not going to approximate until I finish with the work itself. Now multiply 23 by that. This is negative, so this is positive. Answer here must be negative. So I'm going to have 23 multiplied by 9.8, and I know straight away I am having 225.4 is equals to zero. And what do I want? Let's take this out. So this is just simply, I am adding this to that. So this is 31.5467. And my normal force is now 193.85 newtons. That is the normal force. Now I have seen my normal force. I need to now find the work done by the friction. So I go straight into the formula again because we said this is friction. Our work done by the frictional force is now going to be the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal multiply by the displacement multiply by cos theta okay now check and see what is this cos theta it is the angle that is formed between the displacement and the applied or the force that we are what we are calculating it what it work done what is that force we are calculating it is the force of friction where is it going According to my free body diagram, it was going in this direction. But now, where is the object going? The object is now going in this direction. So, our displacement is here. Our frictional force is here. What is the angle that will be formed? We are going to form an angle of 180 degrees. So, this is going to be 180 degrees. All right, and I will tell you the reason why. At the end of the day so you will know because we are dealing with friction the work done must be negative so we must have what a negative work done so even it's going to be a negative work done that must be what our 180 degrees so let's do the substitution now our work done by friction is now the mean which is 2.0.20 multiplied by our normal force which we have calculated and we got 193 point Eight five, we multiply by our displacement, which is four point five, and now multiply it by cos one hundred and eighty degrees. And let's see what is going to be our answer. So we are having zero point two zero multiplied by one nine three point eight five multiplied by 4.5 multiplied by cos cos of 180 degrees and finally we have gotten negative 174.47 newtons and that is the what the work done by the friction so now we have found the work done by friction which is this it is a work done by friction it is a negative work done keep that in mind that anytime work is done by friction it is said to be a negative work done because friction is the force of opposition to the motion of an object so this becomes our answer Let's look at our third question, which is for us to find the total work done. Okay, so the total work done, it's simply 
the work done by the pulling force plus the work done by the friction. We have calculated the work done by the pulling force. We have calculated the work done by friction. The work done by the pulling force, we said is 202.74 joules. And the work done by the friction is negative 174.4678 joules. Well, I am not using the approximated values. I'm using the actual values because at the end of the day here, I want to get the correct answer. I don't want to have a double approximation. So I'm using the actual values there. All right. So let's move on. I have WT is now equals to what I have is 202.74 plus. But this value here is negative. So I put that in bracket and make it negative 17. 74.478 uh, right and now let's check and see what we're going to have 202.74 this multiplied by this will give us a negative sign so that becomes negative 174.478 and then finally we are here getting 28.262 which is approximately to what 28.26 joules so this is the total work done the total work done on this particular object so we can see that the total work done is a positive work done. The work done by the pulling force is a positive work done. And the work done by friction is a negative work, work done. And that is the reason why we can see that we covered what? A distance or displacement. The object displaced itself to 4.5 volt meters. So this is the final result for this particular problem. Thank you very much. For watching this video and please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel as you subscribe please share like and give your comment for your comments is very important and that is what will keep us going see you next time bye bye